Carrick Fergus FM 107.6. And joining me here in the studio, a very recognisable face and a very recognisable voice, as it is really after all, Tim McGarry. Tim, how are you doing? I'm very well, Michael. It's a pleasure to be here on Clark FM. I'm sorry, Clark <laughs> Fergus FM. <laughs> what a joy it is. Thank you very much for having me. You, you figured us out already, darn it. Yes, I've met your dad, I've met your brother, I've met you. Is there anybody here who's not a Clark member <laughs> of the Clark family on this station? We, we keep them all fair, they're just not that's as good. That's it, no, that's it. <laughs> Go for it. So, uh, it, you know, like I said, it's fantastic to have you down, especially here as we're trying to promote the Northern Ireland Children's Hospice. Uh-huh. A great, I've actually been, done a couple of things for the Children's Hospital. I was always so visited as well. We, we were in there a few a couple of years ago for a couple of kids who were big fans of Give My Head Peace, and it is somewhere kind of special, you know. Uh, and it's one of those causes that, you know, it talks to everybody's heartstrings, but you really need to go there and see how, what the good work that those people do in there and what it means to families and parents and stuff. It is unbelievable. So it's a very, very good cause, and I'm more than happy to support it. You're not looking money, by the way, are you? You're not. No, looking, we're not. Got, I see no tin, which is always good. <laughs> we 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 didn't uh, want to do that to you after making you drive down from <laughs> Belfast as well today. But uh, one of the things that they're doing is they're going to try break a record, to try and do the uh, without going to sleep. I think it's 52 hours they is have this, to stay. This is the one that Chris Moyles made the other. Did yeah, he not do that? He did. And well, the, well, listen, if you can beat Chris Moyles, I'm entirely on your side. <laughs> Please, you can do this. How many, how many hours is it? 52. That's a long time. That's a long time. I can't think that how long. I don't think That's I could break two and that. a bit days. You're yeah. going to be up. Is it you going to do it? No, thankfully not. It's we've another <laughs> member of the Clark family. I'm sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> we've, uh, we've got some guys from a local charity organisation who have come in. They're helping us support the hospice and uh, they're going to do it. But, I mean, they've really mapped it out. They've done all sorts. They've talked to sports scientists and everything and said, you know, if I eat too much sugar, will that, you know, make me knock down my levels and will I pass out? It's, it's crazy how it's gone. But, uh, you know, uh, your career uh, is blossoming and you, you keep changing what you do as well. blossoming. Oh, gee, that's very kind of you. I wouldn't have said that myself, but yeah. <laughs> no, well, well, you know, because you started off, you did acting. Didn't you? I, I used to be a lawyer, believe it or not. A lawyer, then, sorry. Uh, is, yeah. But I did, I did do bits of acting, but me and the two guys who do all the writing for Give Me Head Peace met at Queen's a long, long, long time ago when you weren't even thought of. And we uh, we started doing stage shows for charity events, basically. We used to do lots of work for Oxfam and Save the Children and Amnesty International. And uh, we started getting big crowds coming to them. And then we thought, jibbers, I wonder if we could make a few bob at this ourselves. So, <laughs> so was law... The idea, and then you realised, oh, this is actually working out quite well, nice on the I, side. I know, I, I did a bit of acting in school, but it wasn't very good. And it was basically Damon Quinn who plays Carl and Give Me Head Peace, and he used to write plays at school. And he came to university and he wrote a couple more plays that weren't very funny. Well, no, until I left, because he's probably not listening. No, they were very funny, but he got <laughs> all, he kind of dragged us in to help him out with a couple of his plays, and that's where we met. I mean, myself and Michael McDowell, who plays Billy the Peeler. Yeah. Me and Damon and Michael still twenty odd years on are still like together and still writing together and still you know producing lots of stuff together but it was basically Damon Quinn's fault and was that series was it hard to pitch initially to try and get it put on air was it seen as controversial because you're you're poking fun right at the, the two communities in Northern Ireland I, that have been annoying each other for years well we've done we done a lot of stage shows before that and we did some radio work and so we kind of knew that there was an audience out there that liked that but the BBC did take a big risk to be fair to them yeah. and uh, the BBC have always usually been very very good just in the certainly in the early days and they were very exp- and they were because a lot of we were quite afraid from the very early days making jokes because there were still people being killed at this time and people thought it was you know wasn't a very good idea to make jokes about paramilitaries and politicians but what we found was that there was actually a sort of war weariness and people were really delighted that somebody was finally talking about what was happening outside their front door instead of just ignoring it. So and I think 83 episodes in total, which is Something phenomenal. like that, yeah. I, I can't even remember. Do you know there's bits of them I can't remember? I have a couple of kids and I have DVDs and I put them on and, and the start and I go, I have, no, I have no memory of writing this. I have no memory of being in this. <laughs> and they're still funny. Yeah, no, they're fantastic <laughs> to watch. Uh, myself and my brother, um, like you said, you've met him as well. Both were, and uh, still are, you know, still watch them online well, massively. Fans it's of the very series. funny because a lot of kids who, who uh, it hasn't been on four or five years, but yeah. we still do tours and still get massive audiences. We're in the Opera House in April and we were all over the place and sold out across the province. And it's brilliant, you know, that people still remember those characters and still like them, which is nice. Yeah, I, I think in a sort of post conflict society, it's helpful to have those sort of programs as well to move people on. Absolutely. I mean, I mean uh, there's a lot of a lot of people regarded Give Me Head Peace as a political show when it was on, and it kind of was. Yeah. In that it, it did deal head on with some of the big issues of the time. It did deal with the ceasefire. It did deal with decommissioning. It did deal with marching and all that in a humorous way, and you know, took the hand out of people. And if, uh, the only lesson, the way we, it was no real political lesson apart from we shouldn't take ourselves too seriously in this country, you know. Yeah, I mean, I was looking online at some of the people who you've listed as your favourite comedians. Now, you can tell me if it's wrong, right? But it says Larry David, who you, 
you, if you lost the hair, you could look a bit like Larry oh, stop David. Stop that, yes. I'm a, I'm a young, handsome Larry David. Yeah, yeah. he's brilliant. He's I, you know, I didn't really like Seinfeld, but I think the Larry David, oh. the, the Curb Your Enthusiasm is just genius. It's I phenomenal. Know. I've only found that sort of in the last few months. I um, just started watching it fun of back accident when I was going yeah. through the freeview. It's an unbelievable show. Unbelievable. Uh, so that's right, Kevin McAleer. Kevin McAleer, another genius. Brilliant. Yeah. And then, just for fun, Jeffrey Donaldson. Jeffrey, <laughs> did I say Jeffrey Donaldson? Yeah, Jeffrey, <laughs> yeah, God help me. Jeffrey is, uh, I don't normally get on with our politicians, I'll be honest with you, you know, but uh, Jeffrey Donaldson claims to be a fan of mine, which is a kind of a bit disturbing. You know, but, uh, <laughs> well, uh, speaking of the Give My Head Peace crew, was at an event that was uh, being run in Blackstaff House a while ago, and Olivia Nash was going around and talking to a lot of young people who were, you know, showcasing their work. And inevitably, she got, here, you're your one off a of TV. And I sort of, yes, it's Olivia Nash. And we got talking, but your name came up and she had nothing but nice words to say about you. Is that right? She must have been, you was know, she, working she that, right day. that day. Was she all right that day? She's drunk. She's great if she's off the sauce. She's a lovely, <laughs> lovely woman. But no, she, Olivia was brilliant because Olivia, Olivia uh, is, will not have made me saying she's slightly older than us. And she worked with the great Jimmy Young way, way back in the late yeah. 60s and early 70s. And we got her in to do a radio thing. 100 years ago and we just loved her to bits and she's just so professional and so old school she was like our, she, she's a bit like our mommy when we go on tour she's the one who looks after us all you know and she doesn't even mind all the jokes we've made about the, the, her height and we've made at least <laughs> two jokes every episode of giving my head piece about her height every stage we make jokes about her height and we we'll also take the hand at a Lauren <laughs> and she doesn't yeah. matter because she's a Lauren person and I uh, I got in trouble with the mayor of Lauren did you hear oh, that? Oh how did you do that? I made a joke about Lauren on the radio all I said that Lauren was going to be the setting for a new reality TV show called I'm a Catholic get me out of here <laughs> 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 and I got uh, very upset it was only a joke it, it was, was only joke. joking <laughs> it's only a joke of course but <laughs> very good no I no, a friend of mine actually lives beside her and says she's pleasant a very pleasant woman to live beside oh, no, so she's good, a good neighbour as well but I didn't realise how short she was until I met her. I she's mean, four foot eleven and a half, and the half is very, very important to her. So don't forget that. <laughs> That's like when you're little and you're telling people your birthday. Uh, <laughs> I'm five and three quarters. <laughs> but yeah, she's a brilliant. Uh, I mean, that, that, that sounds a bit patronised, like a trooper or something. But she's a total professional, and we've thrown lots of stuff at her over the years. And she's just a joy to work with. We're on tour, as I say, all of April. It was just great to see her again. You know. One of the other things you do is you're an after dinner speaker as well. And I was uh, lucky enough to be at the Northern Ireland Football Writers awards recently which you were speaking at and telling lots of great jokes keeping the crowd entertained yes i do a lot of after dinner stand up i do a lot of stand up and after dinner speaking uh, that was a tough crowd now they after it was basically yeah. because i'm a cliftonville fan and linfield were winning everything uh, so i had to take the hand out of the linfield players but they, 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 they did all right they were, they were okay but i do do a lot of those i do a sort of two or three a week you know i'm doing last friday i did the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants. Don't let me interrupt you now. He's waving. By the way, <laughs> your DJ's busy waving at people passing by here. He doesn't give a damn. It. No, I'm they were probably waving to you. Tim. <laughs> Sorry. <right. laughs> um, but no, I do I do a lot of for you know accountants and all sorts of people. Anybody will have me basically. But it's it's good fun because you you can tailor some of the material to what's happening outside, but also you know you can. You can you can judge an audience very very quickly too. You know a good dinner from a bad dinner within two seconds of telling your first joke. But I, I really enjoy it. You know, yeah, it gets me all over the I'd place. say footballers are a hard crowd as well to entertain. Well, I was surprised with the lack of drink that there was in there. But the, the, they were very the, sober. The, they were very sober, weren't they? You know, but the crack was good. Now I have to say, um, I, I'd been at that dinner the, the year before and it just added, and uh, so they invited me back, which was great. You know, but you couldn't. I, couldn't compete with the great Jackie Fullerton. Nick, the man was—he was the compere. He was superb, wasn't he? Yeah, he's, he's phenomenal. Jackie—he just doesn't have an off button. He's just always funny. Yeah, he is always funny. Yeah, and he's like that in real life too. When he's off, <laughs> <laughs> when he's hanging out. Um, I don't know if you remember this. It was—I was—it was a good few years ago. We met at a BBC thing. Um, it was again sort of a young people come and show what you're about. And um, Alan Simpson had me on his show and stuff talking to me, right. and you were giving me wee bits of advice before I went on. And uh, was I it? just said, stuck. Yeah, you were, you know, a was lot of good advice. Good advice. advice. Yeah, well, I'm still around, aren't I? So it couldn't have been too bad. But uh, no, I just remember meeting you that day, and you were, you were very friendly and chatty, and I have to say, you know, it was appreciated at the time. And uh, I remember the picture turning up in a paper somewhere. I don't know where these cameras come from. And I'm sure you're used to that. Do you there's get that when you... There's a man taking pictures of me right now. Is there? I don't want the brew to know I'm, I'm here, you know. But it's just <laughs> that, hopefully it's not the back of my head as well. well but I didn't even come to her. And you know, my wife will be upset. <laughs> <laughs> Are you in Clark as well? Is this a, a non-member of the Clark a, family? Declare for everyone your surname. That's Robert Stewart. And he's not related? Robert Stewart. 
You're very welcome. That's the story, and he's sticking to it. Um, so sorry, I was nice to you. Yeah, yeah. tell the tell the people again that I was nice to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were. It was uh, just a chance to get talking and all, and you were very engaged. And you were asking about uh, what I did, and I told you about down here. And I don't think either the two of us could have guessed that a few years on you'd uh, be appearing on the show. But yeah, it's great to see you. No, I, I'm glad that you. you I mean, you, you did it. I mean, it's great to see we radio stations like this popping up. I've been in Carrick Fergus a couple of gigs. I did a gig in the city hall, uh, the t- city hall, it's town hall. We like to pretend we're a city too. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, you could be a city. Look, if Newry can be a city, anybody can be a city. So, Carrick, you know, don't let that, don't let them hold you back. But it's a, lo- it's a lovely wee town hall, and I've never been in it before. It's fantastic. It's oh, yeah. great to see, you know, something like this. You know, the community radio stations really do connect with an audience, and they really do help. And don't forget the good cause of the children's hospice. So, help it. So, was Alan Simpson any good? Like, did he, was he any use to you? Uh, he's not bad, sure, he's not. That's all right. <laughs> No, he's, he's a good sort, Alan, as well, I have to say. But, Tim, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much Enjoy. for coming Thank down. Thank you very much for having me. And, ladies and gentlemen, Tim McGarry.